So the topic of my talk is copy paste Jetpack Compose and the subtitle is for science. I'll explain all of the, the reasoning behind this in a minute. I am Maya Grotepas. I'm an Android engineer at a company called Luno in South Africa. And that is my Twitter handle if you want to ask me questions. And I'll also post a link to these slides when on my Twitter when we get through. So the first thing I want to do is give you a quote. This is a quote by Stephen King. It says, if you don't have time to read, you don't have time or the tools to write. Now, we know this is applicable to literature, not to code directly. But if you look at code, there are some similarities and some differences. So for reading in code, often we're reading code or we're reading documentation. Um, and for writing, we might be actually writing code or modifying code or refactoring code or fixing things. Then there's also testing and debugging. And in between all of this, we often copy and paste our own code or other examples. So you can see this reading and writing is not as clear cut. It's a bit more blurry in the case of code. So why am I giving this talk? Well, I'm interested in the sort of reasoning behind why people copy and paste. But also, I've just been learning the new Jetpack Compose framework. And Jetpack Compose, for people who don't know, it's a declarative UI framework, which is set to replace the old view system. So the, the question around reuse, I mean, copying and pasting code is like the most primitive form of reuse. You're just literally taking a piece of code from one place to another. And often that initially happens if there's something that I don't know exactly how to code yet, I find a working example and I copy and paste it. So this talk is part personal opinion um, about this and part investigation because I noticed when I was learning Jetpack Compose that it seemed really easy for me to copy and paste snippets of code while I was busy learning. So let's just look at Jetpack Compose. Let's see. So the thing about Jetpack Compose which makes it different is, is that you construct the UI by declaring how you want the UI. And how you do this is, is you have a function and you have sub functions and you have basically like a tree of functions that get called and the, this tree of functions will emit a UI. Comparing that to the old system, the old XML system, where we had classes, base classes, view, maybe have some properties, some child class, another child class derived from this child class, and maybe there's a piece of code at the bottom here that I want to copy and paste, but it uses a property. This property sits in another class. So what we see here is a classic composition versus inheritance um, scenario. And in the case of Jetpack Compose, there's something else at play here. With Jetpack Compose, I've got this concept where you pass in the state. You can have state inside one of these composable functions by using something like remember, or you can pass in the state. So if these functions over here have their state passed in, a function over here has its state passed in. And if I want to copy this function, because it's getting its state from its parameters, it's quite easy to just snip out this piece of function and copy it into my code um, and pass in some arbitrary state. And in that way, it's easy to copy. And so you can see here, if I tried to copy something at the bottom here, I would actually need all of the classes to be able to copy and paste this properly. The other thing at play here, of course, is that all of the Jetpack Compose functions are all in Kotlin. So I am just in one language, and I can copy and paste across in one language. If I want to do the same thing in the old view system, I'm either copying Java or Kotlin, and there might also be some XML involved. So I'm switching cognitively. I'm switching between languages, potentially switching between three languages, depending on where I'm copy and pasting from. So now let's just look briefly at a typical Jetpack Compose composable function. The composable functions don't all look like this, but these are some of the main things I want to talk about. So the first thing you'll notice here is there's an annotation. So you annotate the composable functions with this at composable annotation. The next thing to notice is that often these composable functions have this modifier as one of the parameters. Then here, there could be some or more state. Here, I'm just saying string. It's just an example. And then often with these composable functions, you have a slot. So what this is, is it takes a lambda, 
And it means that this function can wrap some more composables and so you can actually nest it. So it means from writing small reusable composables, it means that you can put some function inside your comp this one called my component, and then you can wrap that around. So this architecture, the way that these things work, where this, there is this slot that takes a lambda, and this modifier actually means helps with the cut, copy and paste and reusability. I'll show you some more about that in future slides. The next thing I want to say is about at Composable, what this actually does is it's a compiler plugin that will, at compile time, it knows about the state of the Composable, but it also here might inject some extra information, the Composer and some information about the state. And the other thing to notice here is that this function returns unit. So even though we're working with functions that are stateless, these are not pure functions because this unit just means that this function is used to declare how the UI should be and the composable will figure out, um, the, comp the composer, the one that gets passed in here, will figure out how the UI gets built. So with that as a background, let's just look a little bit more about modifiers. So if we have this network of functions, the one calling the other, and maybe this one has a modifier, how Compose works is, is that it has this modifier chain. So modifiers get called in sequence. And so when the composer will come to each of these nodes, it will look at the modifier chain and see in sequence the modifiers which need to be applied before it goes in to look at the nested composables. And each of these nested composables could potentially have a modifier. The interesting thing about the modifier is that there are some basic generic modifiers that all of the composables can use. There are some scoped modifiers that only work in particular composables, but there are some basic ones like, for instance, padding. And because these can be chained, it's quite easy to find some other composable somewhere that has a particular modification. And then just to copy and paste, cut, snip out the padding, or clickable or whatever you need to do and you can easily copy it from one to the other and this kind of like a nested composition if you like also makes this learning of Jetpack Compose with copy and paste much easier to do. So on this slide what I want to talk about is the way that the team designed the APIs. So one of the key principles about um, the API for Jetpack Compose is what they call sensible defaults. So what this means is, is that, say, for instance, I want to animate this composable, this Dogecoin composable. I can quite easily copy from the samples animated visibility with not a lot of parameters. And this actually looks like quite a simple thing. And here you can see the brackets, which is the slot where this Dogecoin, this extra composable, um, can go into the parameters. Now, this looks really easy. And for someone that's starting off, this is an easy way to start. However, if you want to start working with it and you need to see that you need to actually change some of the parameters, let's look at the signature of this animated visibility. And what we see here is thanks to Kotlin and thanks to this concept of sensible defaults, we actually have a modifier coming in here. It's got the default modifier. So if you needed to mod use the modifier to change something, you could. And we have an enter transition and an exit transition, and here we have some default transitions. So if you don't like the default behavior, it's actually quite easy to modify. But for someone just learning quickly, you can learn something and just apply a default call of the API and quickly get started. So now I want to just zoom in briefly to some of the pitfalls of copy and pasting code. So we've all seen the memes. And the sort of guideline around here, this philosophical point of don't use what you don't understand or use what you understand. So for this, what I want to say here is that if I am using copy and paste for a learning tool and I'm using it to understand how something works, I find it invaluable. But if I'm using it to just copy and paste and I don't understand, I might actually be replicating bugs and all sorts of unwanted behavior. So the next potential pitfall is, is that if you go on the internet and you're finding things to copy and paste, what you need to watch out for is the 1.0.0 release was on 28 July 2021 and the beta was on 24 February 21. So anything you see dated before this date 
the APIs might have changed. And in between, there were some API changes. And lately, the APIs have been pretty stable. So if you find a piece of code you want to copy and paste, then what you should do is read the release notes. These dates are applicable to this runtime one. Read the release notes, and they'll say which API changes uh, you should look at. And or you can find another example that is fresher, that has got later dates, in which case the APIs will be more stable. So now just briefly, some good sources of places you could copy and paste from code to learn Compose and to add to your code base. There's obviously the official docs and samples. Quite usefully, there's a copy and paste icon there that you can just grab the code out of the official docs and samples and code labs. And then an interesting thing is if you're looking at those samples in your app or if you're looking at some of the Jetpack Compose um, composables in your app, if you look at the documentation, there's this at sample annotation. This is taken from the documentation of Simple Column. And the interesting thing to note here is there's this path, Android X Compose Foundation allowed samples like that. And that refers to this, all of this code is open source. You can find it in the Android code source. There's a link to that. And so what this means here is that they're using the actual running Compose examples to populate the docs by using these annotations. So you know that the examples inside the docs are runnable, but if you want to see how these examples are actually run inside an app, you can look for these examples inside um, the Android code search. In fact, one of my favorite places to look is for the material samples. So there again, sample Android X Compose material samples, button samples. So say I wanted to know how to do different buttons in material. Um, that would be a good place to look also in this uh, repository. But also in particular for Material, there's, a U, there's an app on the Play Store which has all of the components in it. So you can literally wander around the app, find the thing you want. So maybe you want an outline button or a button or a text button or whatever the, the Material component is you want. And then you can look inside the Catalog app, inside the um, Android X Compose Material Samples repo and find the exact code of how that was implemented and used. And then, of course, if you need something a bit more complicated, there are the official samples by Google that show things about themes and other more interesting things around how to use Compose. So now from the community, of course, I want to highlight just three places quickly. The first is a website by Vinay Gaba, Jetpack Compose app. What I like about this website is you can type in some, some old term like edit text, like in the classic Android. It will say what the Compose equivalent is, and there would be links over here to get the little pieces of code that you can copy and paste. The next one is Compose Academy by Joe Birch. Also, I mean, this is a really good source. Joe is a good source, and there's a book for him coming out soon. So that's the second community uh, source. And then the last one is by Jens Klingenberg. It's what I like about this one is, is that it's a Git repo with MIT license. So you won't have any licensing issue copying any of this. It's pretty up to date. And in fact, since it's an open source Git repo, you can actually add your own examples to this Jetpack Compose playground if you wish. And now just a bonus goodness about um, Jetpack Compose and copy and pasting. Recently, I wrote some animations for a little app. And I managed to literally copy and paste the animations into Compose for desktop. And mostly it was working fine. And with that, the conclusion I have here is if we're looking again at reading, copying, pasting, running, testing, modify, debug, if the copy and paste part of this process is one where you learn and then refactor and make the code your own, then I think it is a viable form of re reuse, code reuse, and a really good resource to learn Jetpack Compose. And with that, I will take questions. Thank you.